and we are back. I'm Fly Navarro with Fly Zone Fishing. Here's Ray Rocher for R and R Tackle. Ray, how are you today? Wonderful. Today we are sitting here off of South Florida, and one of the more popular ways to go fishing is kite fishing. Why do you guys do it? Kite fishing really is uh, a pain. You know, <laughs> it's really difficult. You know, but uh, it pays off. You know, to, to compete, you kind of have to do it. Why does it pay off? Um, I think the very simple answer is coverage. Okay. Footprint. You know, you think about, you know, four rigger baits, six rigger baits. You know, where, how big's your box? You had kites, it might be this big, you know, versus rigger. So, and not to mention, you have lots of dynamic things you can do with a kite. You can lift a bait, position it on a free jumper, drop them back. You know, that, that that's kind of advanced training right, now, but you know now let's just get into it we put a kite up and the bait is not connected to the kite the bait is connected to the to a clip yep on the kite line sure. correct yep and then down to the water yep so what you're doing is keeping all your terminal tackle out of the water yeah a lot of that yep okay yep. and where did this idea come from did it start here in south florida well i think bob lewis really introduced it maybe in the 60s, 70s, before my time. But it really came from the Polynesian Islands. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but that's where it originated. Tommy Gifford learned about it over in California. I want to say the Tuna Club. Silk Kites brought one back to Bob Lewis. He realized the potential, patented it, gave the patented rights to uh, Pompanet, and Pompanet built them for, you know, more than a dozen years. That's why the old, old kites are a Pompanet kite with Bob Lewis's signature. Nice. And now, when it first started, you was flying one kite, Mm -hmm. And now, mainly for sail fishing, mm -hmm. uh, people are flying two, correct? Yep, but walk before you run. I, no. We're going to get there. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> I know I've seen, and we've discussed it before, yeah. uh, where during uh, some of the SKA Kingfish tournaments, I've seen boats with up to five kites. Yep. So again, like you said, it's, yeah. it's walk before you run. Yeah, so, yeah. Perfect. A little history on kite fishing. Uh, one, one, one more interesting thing. Uh-huh. Kite fishing is the only technique I've personally been involved in tournaments that it got banned two times. One in the early 80s, Merritt Monterey Rybovich tournament, uh -huh. and secondly at the Reef Cup in Ocean Reef. So that tells you a little bit too about how effective it is. Why, okay, that was my question for you. Why did they ban it? Oh, well, my, my take on it, because I was there fishing in the years surrounding it, a lot of success, a handful of guys. John Duda Sr. in the early 80s taught Jimmy Lewis and I, I was working for Jimmy on the Tropicat taught us how to lead our kites. John Duda Sr. is the originator of that idea, to my knowledge. Taught us, Dick Greiner, the three of us came in the top three positions in the Mer first year of the Merritt Monterey So it, it was just an and, unfair advantage. Yeah, and they, you know, were, locals were not happy, and you know, that's a long time ago, but I watched it. And then uh, the next year, and they actually had kites for two years. The next year, like five guys fished two kites, and they came in the top six places. The third year it was banned. And the Reef Cup, same thing as some guys, you know, the two kite guys. And a lot of it depends on conditions. Slick, calm in the Keys, you're going to be riding the tower looking at, you know, tailors and, well, I mean, swimmers and yeah. stuff. But when it's windy, you know. All right, well, that gives us a little history on uh, why people kite fish and where it came from. And thank you for joining us here in the Fly Zone. <laughs>